It's now winter time at our home in the country, but before we get into full-blown Christmas mode, I wanted to share with you some footage that I've been holding on to for a while from back in the fall. Specifically, showing you some of my cooking process for a very special meal that I have developed since moving here to the country. And it is basically our version of amazing smash burgers because when we lived in the city, we were really spoiled with lots of amazing restaurants near us. And one of our favorite things to eat frequently was smash burgers. And I never had gotten the hang of making them myself at home, even though I had tried. But since moving here to the country, there is literally no options for that kind of burger around here. So I decided it was time to learn to make my own. Shortly after moving here, my husband bought me a beautiful KitchenAid mixer with a bunch of different attachments. And one of the attachments is for grinding meat. So I decided I may as well go all out and make my own freshly ground beef to make these smash burgers with. So it starts out by roughly chopping up some steaks and letting them sit in the freezer to get partially frozen. I also have my meat grinder in the freezer getting nice and cold. And this just helps it to grind the meat effectively and also safely without anything getting too warm. So I am actually also making some homemade buns for these burgers because although store-bought buns can be convenient for when we're making frozen burgers, if I'm going to all the work of making these beautiful smash burger patties, I feel like they really deserve a homemade bun. And I did find a very quick and easy homemade hamburger bun recipe. It only takes about 40 minutes. And here I am mixing up the dough. One of the things I really have been enjoying about living in the country is actually the lack of restaurants because it means that I have been basically forced to get back my love of cooking. And it's a love that I really feel like I had lost for the past few years, um, partly because life was busy, but also partly because I didn't really have any need to learn to cook deliciously or like delicious specialty sort of meals like this because it, I, I could buy it mo so much better from other people who specialized in that. But now of course we no longer have that option. And so it's forced me to rediscover my love of cooking. And I did really love cooking as a teenager. It was really like a, an escape for me actually. And so I'm getting back to that love of cooking as a hobby and not just as a necessity. This is also helped by the fact that I'm no longer like the 100% only main chef in our house. That's not to say that my husband knows how to cook a whole bunch. He doesn't, but he is very happy to help by making meals that he's comfortable making. And we did recently get an outdoor griddle, which has opened up the world of possibilities of things that he can easily make. So I decided to go all out today and make some, uh, some hash to go with our smash burgers. I had some zucchinis on hand. You can see that one was waiting around a bit too long to be used up, but I peeled off any bad parts. And I'm also going to be using my KitchenAid for this. It's specifically the food processor attachment and it can really quickly dice things up. This was a bit of an experiment, this particular hash, but I liked it. I used potatoes and zucchini and red pepper. Another thing I've noticed is that since moving back home specifically, it has also sort of brought back passions that I had as a younger person, specifically to do with cooking. That again, I kind of lost when we moved so far away and I'm regaining them. Things like, you know, wanting to make my own amazing homemade burgers from scratch or wanting to make homemade buns for things, which really sort of seems like an extra sort of frill to me. But now that I'm back, you know, it seems like something a little more desirable. 
Now it's not to say that I'm doing this level of meal preparation regularly. I'm definitely not. This was just, you know, a special day when I wanted to experiment. I think in today's world, we often feel like we have to do everything, partly because, of course, social media, we are constantly bombarded with images of people who are excelling in their particular niche, and so we kind of take all of these people and lump them into one sort of ideal person who is the best at everything, and we compare ourselves to that one ideal person, which of course no one on social media is. We all have our own strengths and our own weaknesses, but of course what we normally see on social media are our strengths, and actually this video is a case in point. You know, one of the things that sometimes um, makes me feel a bit discouraged about sharing my real life, quote unquote, is that as much as I would like this video to be a representation of my real life, it's of course always going to be a very curated view of my real life. And I would like to figure out ways to make it be less so, less curated and more real and more raw so you guys can see that I am not perfect just like all of you because I really don't want to be contributing to the problem of you know, this overly perfect image of people on the internet. But at the same time, you know, it's important to balance that with a need for privacy. And so it's just something I'm figuring out how to balance, but I want to figure out ways to make videos for you here that are real and raw and encouraging and balance well with the way my life runs, I guess. So here I am now just grinding the meat in my KitchenAid meat grinder. I really, really love this. Now this particular time, you're not seeing this, but I did actually have a couple mishaps with this meat grinder. Of course, nothing serious, <laughs> but uh, the meat grinder wasn't properly fastened into the KitchenAid. And so it started like spinning off <laughs> when I started putting meat in it, <laughs> which was awful. Um, maybe one day I'll, I'll compile a video showing all of my like fails in life in general. I think that would be really interesting and really funny. So basically for smash burgers, you just form your ground beef into all of these balls and then sprinkle them with salt and pepper. And now it's time to actually start smashing these babies on the griddle. We actually got this smash burger press, which makes it a lot easier. It's nice and heavy and it evenly distributes the weight, but we do have to use this piece of parchment paper between it and the burger to prevent sticking. But yeah, the combination of the freshly ground beef being cooked outside on a griddle and then using this smash burger press really makes for amazing smash burgers so pleased with how these have turned out. In the past, I'd never been able to succeed at making a restaurant worthy smash burger, but now I have, and I'm so happy that I've learned the secrets to making my own great smash burgers, while also boosting my creativity in the kitchen. It's also obviously a way more affordable way of feeding the family smash burgers rather than ordering them all for everyone. And admittedly, when we lived in the city, it was basically just my husband and I ordering them after the kids were in bed <laughs> because that was our date nights essentially eating at home. And here they all are on plates. They look so delicious um, and they were so delicious. And now I'm going to take you into some apple adventures. There you can see our friend the porcupine hanging out in our apple tree. Yeah, he found a yummy snack in there. So I figured it was time to share this footage with you a bit belatedly of some of the things that we did with our abundance of apples this year. So I got together with my mom and my sister-in-law and my mom's friend, and we had an apple pie bee making a bunch of apple pies that we all got to take home our share of and put in the freezer. So the way we do this is that a couple ladies would be on one job, such as pastry, while another lady or two would be processing apples. And then once we had a lot of apples and pastry done, then my sister-in-law, Edita, was the main person basically combining these elements 
into pies. So my job was making the pastry. So I made a bunch of batches of pastry and then rolled them out nice and thin and pressed them into pie plates. There's what our big bowls of apples look like and our tabletop in general. This is a huge dining table that my parents have at their place and it was completely packed with various things to make apple pies with. And there's my sister-in-law Edita doing her artistry for our apple pies. So we used a method of rolling out our pie crust using two layers of cling wrap, which were extra large, and you basically wipe the counter with a wet rag so that cling wrap will stick to it. And then you sandwich the dough between two layers of cling wrap. So now I'd like to bring you in to all the work my husband did to process our apples this fall. He would get big pots of applesauce simmering on the stove and then he would also process the apples into apple cider. Okay everyone, I hope you enjoyed this look into our autumn routine here. Some of our autumn routine, <laughs> some of our cooking adventures here at our home in the country, and I'll see you on the next video from my real life.